Hey friends, my name is Susanna McClung and I'm a teacher at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. Today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite animals in the whole entire world. And stay tuned for the end of the video because I have a really fun craft that goes right along with this animal. I have one of my absolute favorite animals in the whole entire world to share with you today. I'm going to move this guy just a little bit closer to my camera if I can. And while I start talking about him, if you can, would you see if you can notice three things about his body and maybe think of what you might wonder about him. So I notice and I wonder about him and maybe I'll answer some of those questions while I tell you a little bit about this guy. So if you haven't already guessed in your I notice, I wonder, or just from your observations, this is a bat. Now this bat is all curled up. His wings are not extended right now, but I will show you one of those guys in just a minute. One of the things that I noticed right away about this bat is that he has fur on his body. Do you see his furry body? And one of the things that I know about a bat is that he has wings and he flies. And that seems kind of strange to me because that is an animal with fur and wings and I can't think of another animal that has fur and wings and thinking about those bats and their wings and their flying it makes me wonder is a bat a bird or is a bat an insect like a butterfly or a bumblebee or is a bat something different and I will go ahead and tell you a bat is something different a bat is a mammal just like you are a mammal and I am a mammal and if you have a pet dog at your house it is a mammal and if you have a pet cat at your house it is a mammal and lions and tigers and bears and elephants they are all mammals too Mammals are animals that are warm-blooded, which means that their bodies stay the same temperature all the time. Mammals have fur or hair on their bodies, just like you have hair. And like my little bat had a fuzzy body, a furry body. Their babies are born alive. They do not hatch from eggs. And their babies drink their mother's milk. Those are all the signs that an animal is a mammal. And my bat, even though he flies, he is a mammal or she is a mammal. In fact, a bat is the only mammal that flies. There are such things as flying squirrels, but they actually don't fly, they glide. But my bat actually flies with his super, super cool wings. Let me turn this guy around for you. So here's my bat with his wings extended. Now something really cool about a bat is that they fly with basically their finger bones. If, let me see if I can get this guy up here pretty close for you to see. These bones right here are the bat's arm bones. So think about your arm bones. These little skinny bones, these delicate little bones, I don't know if you can even really see them on your screen, those are actually the bat's finger bones. So if you take your precious little hands and hold them out like this, imagine if between your fingers, each of your fingers, you had thin, thin skin and your hands were big, big, big compared to your body, you would be like a bat and you would possibly be able to fly with your hands. But basically a bat is flying with its finger bones. So it's flying with its hands, which I think is absolutely incredible and really, really cool. So again, bat is a mammal. It's the only mammal that flies. Actually, the kitty hog nose bat or the bumblebee bat is the smallest mammal in the whole entire world. Now, one thing that I absolutely love about bats and I love to share about bats is that they're so important to our world. Bats are something called pollinators and a pollinator is an animal that takes pollen from one plant or one flower to another flower and helps that flower to then grow seeds, to grow more flowers, to grow more plants, to grow more fruit, to continue to grow and grow and grow and give us food to eat. So the bat, a lot of bats drink nectar from flowers and when they're drinking the nectar, they get pollen on their bodies. And then when they fly from that flower to get more nectar at another flower, pollen ends up 
dropping on new different flowers. And when that pollen mixes together, it allows the flower to make a seed, which means that the flower can then make more flowers or more plants. If we didn't have bats, we would not have things like bananas, avocados, mangoes, and oh my goodness, even chocolate. Because the plant that chocolate comes from is pollinated by a bat. So they are so important, just like bees are so important, hummingbirds, even honestly, the wind is also a pollinator. Um, so all of these things that, that pollinate in our world are so important. And bats are one of them. Now we said that some bats eat nectar. Some bats don't eat nectar. Some bats eat fruit. Some bats eat nuts. Um, a lot of bats eat insects, which is another fantastic and interesting thing about bats is that if you are like me, you are not so much a fan of mosquitoes. And a lot of bats eat bugs or insects like mosquitoes. In fact, one little bitty bat like this can actually eat up to 500 mosquitoes in a single night, which that is pretty awesome as far as controlling the number of insects that are in our world. 500 mosquitoes less per night from one bat is 500 mosquitoes that can't bite you and cause lots of itchies. So that's pretty thumbs up in my book. So bats eat all kinds of different things they, in fact, there are tons of different varieties of bats. Um, unfortunately, one kind of sad thing about bats is that a lot of bats are endangered. In fact, 13 different types of bats just in the United States are endangered. And that means that there are less and less of them in the wild all the time. Sometimes because the food that they eat isn't as available. Sometimes because the places that they live are kind of being turned into places for humans to go. So that's pretty unfortunate because if the bats continue to go, then some things that we love might continue to go too. Like I said, bananas, avocados, mangoes, chocolate. I don't want a world without chocolate. So I really want to protect these guys and I want people to know that they're not scary. They're really cool. Bats actually use something called echolocation which is the same thing that dolphins use underwater. They use it to be able to almost see at night. If you can see here, I may need to get a different bat. I don't know if you can see this little guy's ears. He's got pretty big ears for some pretty decent hearing. Not sure if you can see maybe on this guy better. Yeah, there, maybe that's better. But he's got some pretty big ears on him. Um, now he flies around at night because he is nocturnal. That means, of course, that he is awake at night and asleep during the day. That's the opposite of you. You, of course, hopefully go to sleep at night and you're awake during the day, but he's not like that. He's wide awake when it's nighttime and he's out flying around looking for his nectar or his insects to eat and he's asleep during the day. So since he's up at night, he can't see as well as we can see during the day. So he uses something called echolocation, which if you can imagine is his way of seeing. His body sends out sound waves and they're able to bounce off of things around him and make a picture or a map in his head. So even though he can't see with his eyes very well, he can see with his brain and that his and that his echolocation has made a map to enable him to see trees, to see where there might be insects, to see where there might be rocks that he needs to avoid flying into. So that's pretty incredible when you consider that he's so tiny, he's so little, and he has such an incredible power in his brain. So that's a little bit about bats. A few fun facts, they use echolocation they are, a lot of types are endangered. They eat all different things like nectar, fruits, nuts, insects. They're pollinators, which means that they help our flowers to grow. They help us to have things like bananas, avocados, mangoes, chocolate. And of course, they are a mammal, the only flying mammal. And the kitty hognose bat or bumblebee bat is the smallest mammal in the world. In fact, 
I think I read that it weighs less than a penny. So I thought today after learning all about how cool bats are, I thought maybe you would want to make your own bat at home. So I'm gonna show you what we're going to make. Let me flip him around. Here's my little bat friend. There he is. Let me show you what you need to make this bat. You're going to need a toilet paper tube. You're going to need some black paper to cut out some wings and to cut out two little triangles for ears. You're going to need some Google eyes if you have them. No big deal if you don't, we can totally draw those eyes on. You're gonna need some black pipe cleaner, some tape, and some glue. Oh, and a pair of scissors and a parent, possibly to help um, if they're big grown-up scissors and a black crayon or a brown crayon or you could use brown paper. The very first thing you're going to do is you need to color your whole toilet paper tube whatever color you have decided on. I decided black so I'm going to color the whole entire thing until it's all nice and colored like that. Then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner and I'm going to cut off just kind of like a medium length. It's not super long. Um, it's like about the length of a finger. But watch out when you're cutting and don't cut yourself. So two kind of medium sized lengths of your pipe cleaner and then two shorter lengths. These are, these are kind of little shorty guys because we're gonna make his feet. So we're gonna take our long piece of pipe cleaner, or our medium piece, I guess. I called it the medium piece, and we're gonna take one short piece, and we're going to wrap this short piece. We're gonna make like almost like a little, I guess I need to do this this way. We're gonna make almost like a little lowercase t. I don't know if you can see that. Let me move this guy over. Can you see my little lowercase t? And we're gonna wrap the toes of the short piece around to make to make that guy. See, like a T? And we're gonna do it again on this one because he's got two legs, of course. So now I've got two T's for his legs. And so I've got my colored tube, my two T's for legs, and my tape. I'm going to tape his legs into the inside of his body. I'm not sure if I can really do this very well on camera, but I'll do the best I can. So one leg taped in and the other leg taped in. So they look just, he looks kind of like that now. Now I'm going to take my colored paper and I'm going to cut out my wings. Now they don't have to look just like this, but I made them to where there's like a little swoop here. And then I have all of these that show essentially like the finger bones, where the finger bones are on our bat. See how they kind of have those little points? So I cut it out just like that. When you have cut out your your little wings, you're gonna put a little bit of glue in the middle, like this. And then you can just glue your bat body right down just like that. Of course, now he needs eyes and ears so that he can see and hear. I'm gonna take my glue stick and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here at the top and a little bit of glue here at the top and I'm gonna stick one ear and two ears on him because we noticed that he had kind of big ears right and then his eyes kind of right under his ears a dot here and a dot here now again if you don't have google eyes at home no big deal you can just draw these guys on you could draw them on even before you start coloring um, and make them any color you want. Now, if you wanted to give him a little smile, you could always give him a little smile too. Um, you could come in here. 
with a white crayon if you wanted to. I don't have a white crayon on me right now, but you could come in here and draw his finger bones onto his wings. And then you have your completed little bat. And what I love about these guys is that we can actually hang them upside down. We can actually take our little pipe cleaners and bend them just a little bit so they hook on our fingers and we can hang him upside down. He'll hang from your fingers. So I hope that you had fun today learning about the amazing mammal pollinating, echolocating bat. Please don't be afraid of them. Please don't think that they're creepy and weird. They're actually a super incredible animal that is really important in our world and we need to take care of. So I hope you had fun. I sure had fun visiting with you. I hope you're all staying safe and well and we hope to see you very soon. Thanks so much. Bye.